Big Boxing Weekend on tap, and Kevin Ioli is going to be covering it for Yahoo Sports. It's Marquez and Diaz, and should be a good action fight, right? I think so, Steve. You know, I'm really looking forward to it. I was in Houston last year uh, for that fight card, which was a terrific fight card up and down. Uh, Golden Boy put a really good uh, undercard on that particular show in Houston, as they have uh, this weekend in Las Vegas. Uh, And that fight went on to become the 2009 Fight of the Year uh, by the Boxing Writers Association. For Yahoo Sports, it was number two. And we know that Yahoo Sports' Fighter of the Year award is the most prestigious in all of boxing. And that went to uh, Paul Williams and Sergio Martinez. But... um, Diaz and Marquez put on a heck of a fight, and I, I think it's going to be a good fight this time. going to be a very interesting fight as well. If you look back at uh, Marquez and Diaz, uh, outside of Marquez fighting Floyd, um, combined, the, you know, I mean, I'm sure you could go back eight, nine fights between them. Every one of their fights uh, is always an action fight. Diaz is great. Yeah, that, the, the concern, I think, going into this fight, if you're uh, considering uh, uh, betting on Juan Manuel Marquez, would be, what did the Mayweather fight take out of him? You know, there, there's two issues there. He took a lot of beating over a sustained period of time, and that tends to really stay with a fighter. Uh, you know, it's like when you get knocked out, like guys that fought Tyson, they were usually okay in their next fight out because, you know, Tyson would hit him with one or two big shots, and you didn't take that punishment for a long time. He'd knock you out in the first or the second round, and, you know, he wasn't beating on you with those hard punches. But, you know, in this particular case, you know, Mayweather for 12 rounds, you know, he was really drumming Mark. Marquez. And so that that can stay with you. It can slow you down. The other thing that I think, Steve, you know, some people overlook, and this happened to Roy Jones uh, when he came down after beating John Ruiz, is when you go up in weight and then immediately come back down, and he's dropping back down two weight classes, you know, that has an effect on you. You know, he claims that he's, you know, in great shape, that he's really taken the weight off carefully and gotten there. But until he actually gets back in the ring under the lights and performs, you know, you don't know how that's going to work out. I like Marquez to win the fight, but certainly I think there are enough questions out there to make this rematch compelling. And we should point out a while back that Diaz did get finished by uh, Nate Campbell, right? And that was uh, it was a, it was a little unusual where he got finished uh, kind of middle of the fight. He kind of I, I think he kind of freaked out a little bit when he uh, got cut. He got cut, and and he took, and that was another fight where he took a lot of punishment. And when you go back to that fight, I mean, you know, he's alternated wins and losses since that fight, uh, and really hasn't been uh, the same uh, baby bull that we saw before. Um, you know, tough, uh, you know, tough going for him uh, since that fight. He really, you know, if uh, if Gail Van Oy and company uh, had judged uh, correctly in the first fight with Malinaji, you know, we could be looking at Juan Diaz having lost four of his last five fights because he lost his last outing to Malinaji. The one before that, he won uh, in highly controversial fashion. The one before that was his loss to uh, uh, Marquez, and then two before that was the loss to Nate Campbell. So, you know, uh, you know, there's some questions uh, that need to be raised about the readiness of Juan Diaz in general. You're in Vegas, so they do need casual fans. I'm here in Vegas as well, but they need casual fans to show up at the arena. It can't be all hardcores. How do you think uh, Vegas is going to react? Because, you know, frankly, across the board, boxing and MMA, uh, we really haven't had, uh, you know, maybe the last 18 months, we haven't had great uh, turnout numbers. Yeah, I mean, I, I've been telling a lot of people this, uh, and I use my MMA experience as a guide. I mean, Las Vegas is really, really, really hurting. Mm-hmm. Uh, we see the fights, you know, the people just aren't here. Um, and it's, you know, I think it's because of the economy, people can't, uh, you know, the locals just aren't coming out. They just can't afford to uh, come out. There's so many people that are unemployed. You know, the UFC, uh, I travel, go to all their fights, and you go around to the different cities, and if they're not sold out, you know, like Montreal wasn't sold out this year, but they had just a titch under Mm 20,000. I mean, so that's a pretty good crowd. And then the UFC just had, you know, two major fights. Uh, They had Rampage Jackson versus Rashad Evans. That wasn't sold out. They had Brock Lesnar versus Shane Carwin a huge heavyweight title fight that wasn't sold out the Mayweather versus Mosley fight that wasn't sold out um, you know basically Las Vegas right now is a very tough place to do business it's starting to turn into a, a fight city where outside of a mega mega fight it's like five or six thousand it's almost a, a ballroom sport so what happens first what's the adjustment do they hold fights at casinos and lower the ticket prices or do they just leave Vegas permanently well you know I think they have to move fights around I mean you know Give Golden Boy credit on this. You know, I have been critical of Golden Boy in a lot of areas in the past, but I think, 
you know, I want to stress, Golden Boy deserves a lot of credit. Ticket prices start at fifty dollars. So, you know, if you're a local, you don't have to buy it on pay per view. You can get fifty bucks, go down and watch the fight. So, I mean, they've done. You know, there's no way you can have for you know they're paying uh, Marquez a million dollars, Juan Diaz a little over a half million dollars, other guys making six figure salaries. You know, so they're laying out some money to pay these fighters. You know, they can't have a five dollar ticket. Right. I mean, you know, so they you know a fifty dollar ticket is about for this level of fight as low as you're going to get in boxing and the top level ticket you know hey i don't want to say only 350 because i okay. i understand 350 dollars is a lot of money to a lot of people um you know you can get an iphone for that for god's sake you know <laughs> so uh you know it's that's a lot of money but having said that, Steve, you know, 350 for a you know, ringside seat, you know, you don't see that too often. Mayweather fights and whatnot, they're well over $1,000. And we should point out, uh, they made a nice effort here putting together a pretty solid undercard. They did. You know, um, I think it's an interesting undercard. You know, I wrote in my column on Monday on Yahoo Sports, this isn't the greatest undercard ever put together. There have been better undercards. Let's be honest here. I don't want to get carried away. But, mm -hmm. you know, it's reversing a trend. You know, the, the trend in boxing, particularly for the top two promoters, Top Rank and Golden Boy, has been to not really uh, spend that much money on the undercard, not really pay that much attention on uh, fights that are on pay-per-view because the belief has been that the main event sells the fight. Well, you know, now I think that Golden Boy is trying to say, okay, if we beef up the undercard, does that give us a little more? You know, do we get 10,000 more? Do we get 20,000 more? Does it make it worth our while? So it's going to be interesting to see how that pans out. Uh, last thing, we should let's get back to the fight. I don't know that you made an official pick. So what do you think happens between Marquez and Diaz? Um, I, I pick Marquez to win the fight by decision. You know, I think that Diaz is going to all um, change his strategy a little bit. You know, and I think that you're going to see him work very carefully behind his jab. You know, Ronnie Shields as a trainer is a guy that always emphasizes the jab. And in the early part of their first fight, the jab was a big factor for Juan Diaz. But he was throwing a lot of punches and he was having some success. And I think he got carried away and forgot about his jab. And Marquez took advantage of that. I think, you know, this time around he's going to remember the jab. He's also going to try to control the distance a little bit better than he did the last time and not follow Marquez into the ropes like he did. But having said that, Marquez is a very wily, smart fighter. You know, he doesn't get credit because he's been in so many fun brawls. As just you know these uh, you know whiz bang brawls that you know you forget that this guy's a smart fighter and a good boxer and I, I think you know he's going to find another way he'll make an adjustment somehow and I think he'll find a way Steve uh, to pull out a unanimous decision victory. All right, thanks, Kev. Follow Kev, and uh, we'll have coverage up on the boxing blog as well on Fight Night. Thank you, Steve.